We've had a look at the Adobe Dynamic Link options, but there is another apparent option down here which says Send to Adobe SpeedGrade. Now this isn't really an export option. This is an option to be able to export a really high quality image sequence of your timeline and all your audio and everything out to a color correction program which is called Adobe SpeedGrade which deals with color correction and color grading. The difference being of course that color correction is for correcting problems with the footage whereas color grading is changing the color for maximum emotional response. So you've got these two options. So that's what Adobe SpeedGrade is about. It's about color correction and color grading. So if I were to click send to Adobe SpeedGrade here it would then start to export a still image, a high quality still image for each individual frame. These are I believe DPX images, they're 32 bit very high resolution images and so having actually exported this sequence which is only two minutes and five seconds long roughly it took quite a few minutes to be able to export an image sequence across to Adobe SpeedGrade. However once it's done it and you open up Adobe SpeedGrade it opens up and it looks something like this and you've actually got the whole thing so you can actually play it because you've got the audio going alongside all the bits and pieces and you've got the individual clips referenced in the timeline here and you can toggle a full view and a graded view and you can add in things like vector scopes and all sorts of different waveform monitors to be able to analyze the footage and get a feel for what's going on and then add grading layers now this is not a tutorial on speed grade this is just talking about getting your footage and getting your information out of Premiere Pro. However, once you've finished, you're going to want to be able to send this back to Premiere Pro for your final export. So it's kind of a round trip. You send it out to SpeedGrade, you do your advanced color correction, your advanced color grading, send it back to Premiere Pro and export it from there. Okay, so I'm not going to go into SpeedGrade now. SpeedGrade is a fantastic application, very high end and something that you ought to learn at some stage but I'm not going to do any tutorials on that at the moment when we're just talking about export. Okay so we've looked at those exports, we've looked at Adobe Dynamic Link and we've talked about Adobe SpeedGrade so really it's this option down here export that we're going to talk about and we're not going to talk about the different formats that we've got at the bottom because you can output it for Avid, you can output it for Final Cut Pro and different types of editing formats what we're going to talk about is this option here, Export Media. Notice it has a, a keyboard shortcut of Control M, which is exactly the same, incidentally, for exporting in After Effects. So I'm going to click Media. And up comes the Export Settings dialog box. And you'll see that we've got two tabs on the left hand side here. And we're on the Output tab. And you can see already I've got black lines one side and the other. And over here you can see that the format I'm on a Windows machine is defaulted to AVI. And if you're on a Mac, an Apple machine, you'll find that it defaults to QuickTime. Okay, so we can change the settings and we can change how things look, but let's just talk about the options that we've got over on the left-hand side first of all. Firstly, you've got two tabs. You've got the Source tab, which is the original footage from your timeline, and you've got the Output tab, which is showing us what's going to be outputted and how it's going to look. And we've got some options under Output, which is Source Scaling. So if you want to use this particular format, which I don't, but you might want to use the format that's over here and you've got black bars or it doesn't look quite right you've got some options by default it says scale to fit but it's fitting as you can see height wise but it's not fitting width wise so we could do scale to fill and if I click that I've got no black lines but the footage has been somewhat scaled now the disadvantage of scaling is that it softens the image up and if you have to scale it too much it just loses all integrity and looks pretty awful um, the third option is stretch to fill and what that's actually done, if I go back to scale to fit, you'll see that I've maintained the aspect ratio of the footage. If I now go down to stretch to fill, you'll see that it just stretches the whole thing out. I haven't got the black lines, but everything has been stretched somewhat, so I've distorted the image that I wanted to output originally. Now I'm going to go back to scale to fit, and so I'm going to go back to my source tab over here. And notice that I actually have a cropping option here. So I can click on the cropping option and I can crop the image to say, you know what, I don't want to see all of this. And I can choose which bits I want to see. Now there are going to be disadvantages to this because obviously you might end up having to scale things. Now you've got a few more options over here as to what aspect ratio you want. So you might want a 4 by 3 or you might want to maintain say a 16 by 9 or you, under none you can have your own custom one. So if I did say 16 by 9, instantly it says, well that's how it would have to look. 
So I, if I wanted to look at the castle, I'd have to do something like that. So if I then go to my output tab, you'll see that that looks absolutely awful because it's been scaled to fit. I've got the other options, but I've also got this one scaled to fit with black borders. If I scale to fit with black borders, it's just going to show the single bit that I want to export, and it's not been scaled, but obviously it's got this black background. Okay, so these are some of the options that you've got. I don't really feel very comfortable about scaling at this point. If I've done any scaling, I'd rather have done it on my timeline. Um, however, if push comes to shove and you need to, you can do it here. Okay, now the format options over here are clearly going to affect how it looks with black lines, so we'll come back to that probably in the next tutorial. Okay, so I'm just going to take this back to scale to fit. It's not going to look any different in this particular example, and I'm going to go down and look at some of the bottom options down here. Now, firstly, you've got the zoom option, which is just a viewing option only. Okay, so if I put it at 100%, I want a closer look at things. I've got some scroll bars here to enable me to have a closer look at the footage. But usually, I tend to leave this on fit unless I really need to get in closely to have a look at something. And then I have options for how much I actually want to export of this total production. I've got lots of bits and pieces in this production. How much do I actually want to export? You'll see here it says source range work area. Now if I just move this up here, here's my work area bar. And so at the moment it's telling me that everything in my work area bar is what will be exported. I can of course change that to sequence in and out points if I haven't say got a work area bar in a ruler and I got rid of those and I was just working with sequence in and out points, I can choose sequence in and out points and that's what will be exported. Or alternatively, if you've accidentally reduced your work area to concentrate on a small part and you want the entire sequence out, you can click entire sequence. Custom brings us back to really these options up here. So I'm just going to click custom and you see that it's not actually made any difference because what we're going to do is set up the custom bits and pieces here. You'll notice we've got an in point and out point options and those refer to these little triangles here and here. And when you drag these triangles through, you're actually shown the final frame. So I'm doing the out point one here, it's showing me the final frame that would export. If I click the beginning one, it's showing me the first frame that would export. Alternatively, I can actually pull through the current time indicator to find the right place. So say I want to export before that transition takes place there. So I can go to that point and I can set the out point and I can come to the beginning and I just want to make sure that I've just got the boys there so I can definitely make that the in point. So I've specified I'm only going to export 17 seconds and 21 frames by using this custom range option that we have here. So this allows you to choose a custom range, say that you just want to export a small part to, to sample, make sure you've got the right codec and everything looks great, that's where you would actually start. So that's the selection part of what we're actually going to export. In the next tutorial, we'll just have a little chat about export settings over this side and bits and pieces that we can play with, although, of course, we always have to be careful.